This here is a file named donut.js that if you open, looks like a donut. And if you run it, generates a 3D spinning donut. Why did I spend hours of my life perfecting this? Well, because I wanted to put it on a shirt. Let's rewind a bit and start from the beginning. You've probably heard of donut.c. It's a classic piece of C code that generates a spinning 3D ASCII donut when run. But arguably the best part about it is the fact that the code itself looks like a donut. And being the JavaScript engineer that I am, I just couldn't accept the fact that it wasn't in JS. Doing a quick search, I found a few JavaScript transcriptions of the code on GitHub. But unless I have a major misunderstanding of what a donut looks like, most of them didn't look like a donut. The one I found that did just cheated with a string of code and eval. That just ruins the whole point, in my opinion. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and make it myself. A donut-shaped donut.c JavaScript transcription in pure JavaScript code. I started by trying to understand all of the math behind Andy's blog that he wrote on donut.c. Did you really fall for that? I wasn't up for trigonometry and a good deal of linear algebra if I could avoid it. But lucky for me, at the bottom of the paper, we already have some JS DOM code for the donut, both an ASCII and a canvas rendering. No surprise that it wasn't donut shaped though. However, the DOM code wasn't enough for me to work with because as real developers say, we need something that can run in the terminal. I started by removing everything that had to do with the canvas rendering because that was completely out of the question for Node.js. I was left with something like this and I followed by plugging it into an AI, asking it to optimize it for the Node.js environment. The result was as follows. It worked fine, but code-wise it was absolutely trash and it would be a crime to turn this into a donut shape. Next I made a few minor edits. First I removed the IIFE that was completely useless in our use case. Next, instead of using console.clear and console.log, we used a 10x developer route and condensed it all into a single process.standardout.write with an escape sequence at the start to wipe the terminal. I also realized that the repetitive use of the math namespace was going to be concerning. Ideally, the shorter each so-called token of our code is, the easier it will be to manipulate into a donut. So I extracted math into a variable m and fixed up the code. With a few more minor edits, this is what we had left. The next step was to obfuscate it and turn our code into a donut. I plugged it into your average web JavaScript minimizer and I got the following obfuscated code. However, it was a good bit longer than the original C code, even with our variable extraction. I fixed this by renaming some variables that have escaped the minimizer's wrath and that seemed to do the trick. With all that said and done, it was now time to turn this code into a donut. First thing I did was to get myself a template. The way I did this was by running the first frame of the donut script with all of the shading characters replaced with periods so that the output is cleaner. Next, I pasted the output into a JavaScript file and began a tedious job of replacing the periods line by line with my minified code. This job is extremely simple in C-like languages because they usually ignore excess spaces and line breaks. A language like Python would make this job hundreds of times harder as it depends on spaces and tabs for the syntax itself. During the process, some places were misshapen because I simply couldn't add a new line in that location, but I would have to fix that later with everything else in place. In the end, after a good bit of messing around with the code, I finally had a donut. You may notice that the ring is slightly stretched vertically. This is because the font that I'm using is currently taller than it is wide. Thus, therefore, while the character count is somewhat square, the font ratio throws it off. In order to fix this, I went into VS Code settings and did a bit of messing around with the line height and font spacing to make it seem slightly more square. With all that said and done, our donut.c clone in JavaScript was all complete. All that is left, run the code and admire it. Huge thanks to Andy S for the original C code. If you want to read his amazing paper or see his code, take a look down in the description. I also have a GitHub link to my personal donut.js code down there, so you can feel free to check that out as well. And yes, I actually did put it on shirt, though it's kind of bad. <laughs>